Yo everybody, what's poppin'? It's your boy Master Seth here, back once again with another episode of Learning Blaze Blue Central Fiction. Today's episode will be a little different. It's been brought to my attention by some of our viewers, as well as new players in the local scene, that the concept of what to do in the game is hard to grasp. This doesn't just apply to Blaze Blue, however, it's hard to figure out what to do in neutral in every fighting game, and how you handle it varies from game to game. How to approach, what to do when you get there, spacing, etc. are all really hard concepts. Even high level players constantly explore how to handle different neutral situations and matchups differently, and a lot of it comes back to matchups and their respective characters. That being said, in this video I will attempt to simplify how to handle basic neutral and blaze blue, and also go over how to handle pressure on both offense and defense. If you are already comfortable with this concept, this video may not be for you, but I will attempt to address problems newer players may have when it comes to understanding neutral and dealing with pressure. So, neutral in fighting games refers to the state in which neither character is in pressure or a combo. Just walking back and forth and trying to get your own offense started and landing a hit is all a part of neutral. The overall goal of neutral, other than landing a hit on your opponent, is being able to push your opponent to the corner and stay out of the corner yourself. But in Blaze Blue, it can be very hard to find a good way to approach your opponent. So I'll begin with how to approach. You have a wide array of movement options available to you in Blaze Blue to make your way in, unless you're Taker and it's all about using them to advance. Running forward and using your long buttons to poke, air dashing in with good jumping normals to make them block, following in behind a projectile, dashing forward and blocking, it all comes down to how your character can approach safely to take their turn. Of course this varies from character to character, and other characters may have an easier time making their way towards the opponent than another. For example, whereas Habiki can follow in one of his clones to close the distance safely, Ragnar generally has to rely on normals and basic movement to make his way in. Of course he could always do something like Hell's Fang to close the gap, but that brings me to my next point. Lots of times you'll see less experienced Ragnar players use Hell's Fang or other specials to close the gap, but using specials in this way is generally very risky and a very bad habit. Using specials to approach puts you in disadvantageous situations more often than not. If the move you are using is not punishable on block, then you will definitely have to concede any offense to your opponent, or the move itself could be something that is easily avoidable and then punishable. Yes, in some cases you can use meter to make your unsafe approach safe, but be careful because if the approach itself is unsafe or easily avoided, then that can't save you anyway. That being said, there are some characters that have to rely on specials for movement, or can use them in very rare cases, but it is not a habit you should get used to because it would definitely end up bad for you more times than it'll end up good for you. What you should try to do instead of using specials to approach is to try to move forward and use your normals and different movement options to take space away from your opponent. Dashing forward and pressing your normals to cover space is a good way to do this, especially if you have great normals, Ragnar 5D. Sometimes just running forward and backing off to see how your opponent will react is a good idea to collect information for your next approach. Approaching from the ground and then air dashing forward is a good way to test your opponent. If they were expecting you to commit on running forward, then they won't be prepared to anti-air you properly, allowing you to get in. Even if you can't make it to your opponent, you can force them to back away. You will slowly push them to the corner. And if you can manage to corner them, you're winning neutral. Because once in the corner, you can bully your opponent to no end. Which is a staple true across every fighting game. The corner is death. A bit of an abstract concept to go along with playing the neutral game is the act of spacing. You generally want to stay in an area on the screen where you can stay away from your opponent's dangerous buttons and react to their other options to gain a better offensive position. This concept is one present in all fighting games, but it's a little hard to grasp at first. But if you pay attention to your matches, you will find yourself already subconsciously thinking about it. For example, have you ever thought, man, Ragnar 5B hits really far away and comes out pretty fast. I should try to avoid it, or I need to find a way to play around it. If so, then you're thinking about spacing. It might not be super in-depth, but it's there. That's a part of fighting games that comes as you continue to play, so I wouldn't worry about it as much if you're starting off, but it's a good thing to keep in mind. Another thing to note, I know Blaze Blue might be a fast-paced game, but you don't always have to rush in at your opponent. You still may need time to chill and analyze your opponent. Slowing things down can work in your favor sometimes instead of jumping headfirst into danger. It's like if you walk up to a wild dog in the street. You aren't just going to assume it's friendly, but you're also not going to just stop and start trying to beat the dog up in self-defense either, are you? Your opponent is a wild animal. Think before you act. 
One issue a lot of players have when dealing with a game like Blaze Blue is escaping pressure properly. A lot of times newer players get locked down in a corner and blocked for what seems like forever until they make a mistake or fail to block properly until they die. And when they finally get to hit themselves, they aren't sure how to properly pressure their opponent and allow their opponents to easily escape or go for mixups that aren't safe and are easy to deal with. Well, fear no more, I'm going to help give you a brief insight on how to dish out pressure and how to safely escape it. So there are two main rules before I begin. One, know your characters and know your combos. If you can make someone block, that's cool, but if you can't capitalize when you finally get that hit you've been looking for, the situation isn't going to get any better for you. Two, sometimes you just gotta block. That's a very sad truth, I know. No one likes blocking, especially in a game like Blaze Blue, where mix-ups and pressure are so ridiculous, but sometimes the best way to deal with a situation, especially an unfamiliar one, is to just block. There are some things you can't escape by mashing or jumping away, and in those times you have to block. You have to learn where your opponent's turn ends, and when they're trying to reset pressure. Find these moments and escape when the time is right. Not everything that's happening to you is real, but you have to learn to find when the pressure ends and the fraudulent pressure begins. Pressure in Blaze Blue is like a tug of war, where the attacking team has more advantage, but the defensive team has all the tools available to deal with said pressure. Let's start with offense and then I'll move on to defense. The point of applying pressure is to go for a, a type of mix-up that will allow you to score a hit on your opponent to perform one of those sweet, sweet combos you practice in training mode. A mix-up refers to making the other player guess what you're about to do and then hitting them with something they were not ready for, like doing an overhead, jumping empty and going low, doing a grab, etc. Some mix-ups are simpler than others, but the result is the same. The reward you get for winning neutral is pressure, which leads to mix-ups, which leads to combos, which leads to more mix-ups, which leads to more combos. Thus is the cycle of offense. Basic offense in Blaze Blue revolves around using your Gatling, dashes, and advantageous buttons to keep your opponent locked down, giving you ample time to go for a mix-up in the form of a grab, overhead frame trap, you get the idea. A lot of basic pressure will net you either a block string or a chance for one mix-up. Usually after a normal block string or after successfully defending against a mix-up, your opponent will have a chance to retaliate. But there are ways to extend your pressure or effectively steal an extra turn. If you think about it like a turn-based RPG, your offense is your turn to attack. And once you fail to land a decisive blow, your opponent is allowed their turn. But by either netting a hit or going for what's known as a pressure reset, you can sneakily gain extra turns. Pressure resets are exactly how they sound. They allow you to start your pressure over from the top and go for additional pressure or mix-ups. Most pressure resets come with some sort of flaw. For instance, some resets leave large enough gaps to be jabbed out of, but they happen quick so it can be hard to react to. Another popular way to reset pressure is going for jump cancels. Jump cancel pressure resets are good because you not only get a jump in, but you can even use it to go for a mix-up versus an opponent who is respecting you too much. The biggest and most obvious flaw of this reset though is that it can be easily countered by a well-timed anti-air or reactionary air throw depending on the character. Some characters have other sneakier ways to reset their pressure, but it all comes down to your character. Sometimes it can be hard to identify what real pressure looks like and what has gaps. It's up to you to study and ask questions and recreate situations, figure out how to escape, and also how to find ways to get the most out of your turns as possible. Because once you let up, your opponent gets a chance to run their game plan. The biggest thing is trying to keep your offense going for as long as you can. The longer you force your turn, the more fidgety and likely to make a mistake trying to escape your opponent becomes. And if they're content with blocking, it gives you the chance to go for more mix-ups. Many characters have different ways to craft their pressure, and you can generally learn basic pressure strings from watching other players who are good with your character to see their basic offense. But you should definitely go and study and lab your own offense once you understand how offensive pressure works a bit more. So you can craft and develop your offense all you want, but it means nothing if you can't escape from your opponent, right? So how are you supposed to deal with offense from your opponent in a game like this? Well, I'll do my best to explain that right now. There are actually a multitude of ways to safely escape pressure in Blaze Blue. Some are as simple as just using the system mechanics, because Blaze Blue has very good defensive options available to you. You can use a combination of instant blocking, barrier blocking, and IB barrier blocking to escape pressure. Making use of instant blocking can cause large, more punishable gaps in your opponent's offense and you can then take advantage of. Making use of barrier and IB barrier can push your opponent farther away where their basic offensive options are no longer an option due to push black. If you have the resources, overdrive and counter assaults can be very valuable assets to ending your opponent's pressure, but are not always available to you. But they are important to keep in mind. 
Reversals are another way to end your opponent's turn, but come at a risk of being baited, such as Ragnar's Inferno Divider or Jin's Gale. That being said, letting your opponent know you are willing to use your reversal may alter their pressure to where they want to bait it out, allowing you to escape or take your own turn more easily. That's more of a mental game that develops between the players though. Another strong tool is character knowledge. Knowing where to hit buttons to interrupt fraudulent pressure is very strong in Blades Blue, but with the wide cast of characters it's hard to know everything, but having the knowledge will help you greatly. You can also make use of the Fuzzy Jump OS we discussed in our last video. Fuzzy Jump OS when utilized properly is a very powerful defensive tool and will force your opponent to play around when used in the correct spots. But fuzzy jumping takes getting used to and you want to be able to play defensively without overusing it because it can be taken advantage of as well. And sometimes the best way to escape pressure is just to block. I know it's not what anyone wants to hear but it's the truth. Sometimes you can just wait out the storm and counterattack when the time is right. Some characters mix ups even leave them at disadvantage allowing you to punish them for trying to mix you up, i.e. Susan no. Blocking can also help you learn your opponent's habits and know when they're going for a fraudulent pressure reset allowing you to react and keep them from extending their turn. Sometimes characters just force you to block and take advantage of you trying to escape, so learning when to pick your escape routes is just as good defense as blocking and waiting for an opening. It's not easy, but the more you work on offense and defense, you'll pick it up a lot faster than you think. Another big defensive option is the ability to keep your opponent from starting offense in the first place. A lot of characters like to approach from the air in Blaze Blue, so having great anti-air options is a really good thing to have. Anti-airs are buttons or specials that are designed for hitting an opponent approaching from the air. Anti-airs are air unblocked but without barrier guarding and generally have head invisibility while giving you decent combos. You can discourage your opponent from approaching from the air while getting in some damage or at least starting your own offense because they were at least forced to block. Anti-airs are a great tool for stopping jump reset pressure as well, usually netting you a counter hit if your opponent wasn't buffering jump barrier in their approach. It is worth noting an additional layer of mind in the game is approaching from the air but then utilizing a move that changes your air momentum if your character has one to bait your opponent's anti-air. It can be risky depending on what options you have available, but it's good to keep in mind. Neutral, offense, and defense are all really hard things to grasp in any game, but especially so in Blaze Blue. If you aren't very used to it, I'd recommend picking up a more basic character with straightforward offense and neutral to help learn and adjust to the games such as Ragna, Jin, Naoto, Hibiki, or Tsubaki. They all play neutral very straightforwardly and they have easy to understand pressure. Once you get used to playing neutral with these characters, you can move on to a more complex character that will allow you to incorporate what you've learned on top of your own game plan. Another advantage of playing a basic character is you learn the building blocks of offense quicker, which will allow you to defend against basic offense better yourself. Then you can just ask yourself, what are my own personal disadvantages when I'm applying this pressure, and you can use that knowledge to help stop your opponent's pressure. That's all I have for this episode. Hopefully this can help teach you the basic game plan of playing Blaze Blue. It's kind of a difficult subject for me to teach, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below or on Twitter, and I'll do my best to help explain. There may be a sequel to this subject if I feel like I left too many things vague in this video, so let me know. But this has been Master Steph with Level 42 Gaming, and I just hope you guys leveled up. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.